Hey everyone, this is Holland Davis, and I'm interviewing Pastor David Rosales, who's the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel in Chino Valley. And really today we're celebrating over 25 years of radio ministry. And, you know, a little bit later in the program, we have a huge announcement to make. But before we do, um, one of the questions I like to ask is, you know, how did you end up in the radio ministry? I mean, that's uh, that's an incredible thing to be able to do. And, and uh, you know, when did you kind of enter into that radio ministry? You know, our church began in uh, 1981. And uh, within the first few months of, uh, of our, the life of our church, we began to think there has to be ways to get the word out, you know, to be teaching and reaching our community. And so there was a small local radio station in the city of Pomona, which was located probably 20 minutes away from our church at that time. And um, we connected with them and asked if they had any radio time. It was a uh, an AM station, and uh, they did. And so we went on the radio, and we're on the radio um, broadcasting from that small station in Pomona probably for a year or two years. And uh, from there, um, eventually what happened was Pastor Chuck uh, of Calvary Costa Mesa um, had spoken to some uh, managers in different radio stations outside of the area, and uh, also, I had a friend of mine named Kent Bagdazar who had moved to, uh, to Albuquerque. And so this all within a few years um, began to kind of jowl together for opportunities to be on the radio. And so we went on the radio originally in Albuquerque after we were on here in Pomona and were uh, on a particular station for a short while until Skip Heitzig in Calvary of uh, Albuquerque purchased his own radio station. So we went on in that radio station over over 30 years ago. And um, at the same time, right around the same time, we got phone calls from uh, WMCA New York as well as WYLL in Chicago. And Pastor Chuck had been uh, recommending our ministry to them. So we went on the radio in WMCA, we went on in WYLL, we went on in Albuquerque, and ultimately, I think in 1990, um, we were contacted by K-Wave and asked if we wanted to be on a Saturday slot. And uh, so uh, actually it was a Sunday, no, it was a Saturday. We went on one, a weekend slot, I don't remember now, it's been a long time, but we went on. It was a Sunday. It was a Sunday slot. We went on, and uh, shortly after that, received a call, and they asked if, asked if we wanted to be on K-Wave. And so that was right around when the summer harvest began with uh, Greg Laurie. And um, so we were on K-Wave for 27 years. Wow. And at what point did you start going every day? Well, we went on the radio on Sundays, like at 8 a.m., and I think we were on— Sundays alone on K-Wave for maybe a month, no more than two. Oh, wow. And then they just moved us right into the slot. David Hawking used to have the 1130 slot. Mm. And so uh, he no longer was broadcasting. And so we were able to take the slot. Well, I know that uh, your program, Assure Foundation, has been a blessing to a lot of people. It's been a blessing to us. Uh, I remember my wife coming home and hearing a message on, on marriage and and said you need to hear this so she got the cassette tape and you know that's back when cassette tapes were alive and uh and brought it home and i so i'm i'm coming into my uh kitchen and there it is you know david rosales and uh sure foundation and a tape on marriage and and i sat down and listened to it and uh and i've been listening ever since it never never helped but at least you listened right <laughs> i did listen <laughs> You know, I can imagine there's just got to be a ton of testimonies that you've heard over the years. Are there any that kind of have stood out to you? Well, nobody ever wrote, so <laughs> let me make something up. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I think the the stories I've heard over the years that have stood out, many, many of them uh, relate really, Holland, to pastors. Uh, you and I recently were in Indiana, and— um, one of the pastors there told me that uh, he's from Southern California and that a lot of his 
His ministry education came from listening to our radio program. Uh, we called ourselves we call ourselves a sure foundation because my ministry uh, philosophy is if you lay a solid foundation, then a structure that that has integrity can be built. Mm. And so I've always called it a sure foundation, though for a while it was called a foundation for living. That was really at the suggestion of somebody else, and I, I wanted to revert to a sure foundation because that's really scriptural, and that's really what I wanted. And so I, I would say that the the testimonies that have spoken my heart the most, many of them have come from uh, ministers, people who have grown in their ministry, somewhat of what you, what you just said, where they listened and something that was said in that study helped them to— um, you know, to learn to serve the Lord and to minister as as a pastor. And so those are the ones that stand out really the most to me, I guess, is the ones that helped. Uh, I, I helped somehow somebody to um, to love the Lord more and to serve him, you know, in a full-time capacity. Yeah, one of the things I love about your teaching is that it's uh, practical. And um, and so, like, I, I always refer to it as the Bible with blue jeans on. It's something that the common person can hear and uh, put into practice in their everyday life. You know, and, uh, it, and as I'm just thinking about, you know, over all the years of ministry, of teaching uh, on the radio, hearing testimonies from pastors, people that have been really blessed by the ministry, um, is there any topic that, you tend to want to really launch into that becomes passionate to you? Is there something that's like a recurring theme that um, that you really love to touch on? You know, I think that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will always speak. And, you know, over, over the years, I've had people not always very, very positively. Frankly, there have been quite a number who have been less than positive. <laughs> Uh, who have noted that I, I seem to naturally flow when it comes to relationships, and uh, I would say that the that's that's really where my heart is. It's um, it's relating to God, you know, love, learning to love Him, learning to to love people, you know. And so you'll hear that. That's my theme. That's my foundation, and so whether it's uh, related to how my wife and I have experienced God together or whether it's my life as a, a father or as a uh, grandfather. You know, it's relational. I, I believe that strongly that the the Christian life is a communal life. It's a not in the communes the way we had in the 60s and 70s, you know, uh, where we get away and live on a farm what I mean is is that it is not good for a man to be alone. God intended to establish community. He himself is a trinity. There is community within the Godhead, if you will. And it's his intent that humanity also be structured to have relationships. So the way that I teach is always applicational because I am not one who thinks as a Greek. You know, the Greeks believe that the acquisition of information was what knowledge actually is. I, I think in a biblical sense that knowledge is the application of information, is the transformation through acquisition. And so Jesus would say, if you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. And that's the Jewish way of learning. And so I've always regarded uh, the teaching ministry to be a, a ministry of not just dissemination of information, but the encouragement for the assimilation so that there'll be a transformation. And that's how I teach. Yeah. So it's, it is, it's intentional that it's life transformational. You know, one of the things I also notice is that you, you teach verse by verse through a passage and, you know, it's like, it's one of those things that we don't really hear a lot today. There aren't a lot of people that just go straight through the Bible. And, you know, where did that come from? How is that a value to you? You know, where kind of what instilled that in you to be able to go through the scriptures line upon line? For me, it was always a very logical thing. I, if you're going to know something, you ought to start with page one and go to the last page. And so it just was logical. I 
you know, I got saved. I began going to Calvary Chapel in Costa Mesa. But as a new believer, I didn't realize what they were doing. It wasn't as if they were explaining it, you know, saying, turn to chapter one and we're going to, it wasn't like that. It was more like me stepping into the middle of a study. And uh, thus, you know, I, I didn't really know um, Chuck's approach for a long time. It just made sense to me. So when I I got saved. I went into the military three months after being saved. And um, I ended up uh, coming home, going to Bible college. It just was important for me to communicate to my parents uh, what God's Word had to say. And so I asked if I could do a Bible study with them. And it just made sense for me to open up Matthew and to go verse by verse. And so my commentators, my original Bible helpers, teachers to me, were uh, the commentators who did a line-upon-line style. And again, Holland, you know, that's just a logic. It just makes sense yeah. to go from verse 1 to the last. And, and, it, and lo and behold, it was, it was everything that Calvary Chapel stood for, you know. And, it, and that's why my heart has always been uh, lined up with, uh, with Pastor Chuck's style of teaching. It always has been without anybody ever saying that's Calvary Chapel. It just was what you do. It just made sense. And so that's how I began uh, back in uh, 1973. Wow, that's interesting. So it really was your own path of discovery that you kind of started doing that. Uh, Much like what Pastor Chuck, he, you know, he was teaching topically and and all, and then uh, got a book of outlines, you know, and began teaching verse by verse through those outlines and through his own path of discovery, just, you know, started teaching line upon line, precept upon precept. Well, um, for those of us that are joining us right now, um, my name is Holland Davis, and I'm here with Pastor David Rosales from Calvary Chapel of Chino Valley. And we're celebrating 25 years of radio. And, um, and you know, we have this announcement that we want to make. And that is that really after over 25 years, really it's like more like 27 years of being on K-Wave, Pastor David, you're sensing that the Lord is moving in a different direction and maybe it's time to move away from radio into another area of media. And do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah, we're, um, we're coming off the air this, uh, this Friday will be our last uh, radio broadcast on K-Wave here in Southern California. And um, I just wanted to connect with uh, some who may have listened to us. You know, I don't, I don't really have a knowledge of how many people listen. We didn't get letters, Holland, <laughs> you know, and no support. So, um, frankly, I, I, I just felt that it's the right moment for us. You know, I, I really feel that, um, that if, uh, if, our, if our ministry would have had value, we'd have probably have received... Um, more, um, you know, more correspondence and all. And I'm just be real with you on that. That's, yeah. a, that's, that's a real basic thing. As a steward of the Lord's resources, I need to be very faithful in, in how I distribute them. And so uh, because we're living in a time apparently that people don't really feel it necessary to correspond, even though they're constantly on their phones yeah. and their computers, it's apparent that, that, that our ministry did not have the value that would have required someone to have corresponded. And so I have to think that way. I have to think, well, what am I going to do? You know, we went on originally because I believed that we had a message. I believe that that the Lord um, opened the door for us. And for 27 years, um, we have done our best to communicate uh, what he's placed on our heart. And it's just a rebroadcast of what we have here on our services anyway. It's not like we're making special <laughs> studies for uh, some, you know, ethereal audience out there and and all of that. That's not what it was. We, we just felt that what the Lord was giving us here was something that people could could be um, impacted by in a positive way. But um, seeing that uh, the people uh, don't seem to be responding uh, to us, I had to begin to think, well, what are we going to do? And so... Um, it just became over the course of the last year, it just became something more more obvious to me that the Lord's resources can be um, used, I think, in a better, more responsible way 
for this church. Right. And uh, so we're coming off of K-Wave. We're not coming off of all radio stations. We are coming off of K-Wave. And um, I'm grateful for the ministry of K-Wave. I'm, I'm grateful that my pastor, Chuck, believed in our message and, uh, and asked us to be on. And I'm thankful for Brian Broderson and for the uh, Calvary Chapel uh, ministry. And I love them very much. But it's just time for us to, to move on mm-hmm. from K-Wave. We're going to go on. We're going to be doing uh, various other things, though. We're still on the radio, again, in a lot of places. But if people were interested in hearing us uh, in, in any, at any time, they can always go to our webpage at calvaryccv.org. Mm-hmm. We have archive studies there. They can... They can hear us. Uh, we're going to be having a podcast. We have podcasts. They could always get that on our webpage also. We're going to be doing Facebook Live uh, programs uh, in the very near future, beginning, I believe, uh, in January. And uh, they can always visit visit, visit <laughs> <Yeah>. us here <laughs> at the church um, at 12205 North Pipeline in the city of Chino. So there's a variety of ways we can remain in uh, in contact. Yeah, because uh, you know the gen- with this with really we're in the me- middle of a of a technology um, shift because of this the new generation that's coming up. Um, I saw a recent study where they're saying a lot of folks are watching uh, YouTube videos on their phones. The mobile phone is like becoming like the number one way that people are hearing messages. They're not tuning in on radio so much anymore. But they're going to their mobile devices and and such. And you were you've even been talking to me about some of your uh, statistics on YouTube, where you're able to see where people are watching from and and how much they're watching. And uh, and you're seeing that same thing where they're actually tuning in and watching your services uh, via YouTube. Yes, we do have a YouTube um, broadcast too. So there's so many opportunities for people now to be able to uh, keep in contact. And, um, you know, radio, I, I, I still think, has a tremendous impact. It's, it's a seminary over the air, as they say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for us, uh, I think in a matter of stewardship, we simply want to take the Lord's funds and place them into, into different things that, that I think uh, produce uh, uh, the fruit that we desire. Mm-hmm. And that's what we'll do. And that's one of the things I appreciate about your ministry is that you're You've never stopped innovating. You've never stopped moving forward. You're not afraid to take risks, go in different directions, and you're not afraid to negotiate the changes that come over time within the ministry. And, you know, I'm just wondering, what are some of the changes that you've seen uh, just within your mini- your own ministry from the time you started to where you are today? What are some of the changes you've navigated through as a pastor? You know, um, in the earlier days of our ministry, we we didn't we didn't even have tapes, cassettes, and all. You know, we I remember when one of our staff members asked me if uh, we could uh, purchase uh, a recording machine for cassettes, and I said, "Why? Who wants to hear our messages more than once? I mean, come on, you're is, <laughs> you're kind of making a an assumption that people would want to hear the same thing twice." And he said, but we're having people ask. And so, yeah, from cassettes, we went on into VHS. There was the VHS, you know, and then we moved on into the uh, the various uh, CDs and DVDs and all that we have today. Um, we've always believed that um, that the gospel needs to go forth. We we know that there are many people who are. Um, who are unable to come to a church service, who who will listen on the radio, who do listen to us on the computer. And we just want to make sure that we, if we have something, which I believe we do, called the gospel, that is valuable. And if we believe passionately that God can use that to change lives, which he does, well, I just see that it's incumbent upon us to do whatever it is that we can to get that word out. And so whether it be printed a lot of people don't read the printed page, so we have to learn how to put it on, you know, something readable on a an iPad or an iPhone or whatever. But we just want to be in the stream of of continuing to communicate, and and I see that as being part of the technological things that we have opportunities to make use of. 
And and what are some of those ways now that they can kind of tap in through social media or what are some of the other ways they can stay in contact with you? You know, if if there's a desire for them to uh, to remain in contact in one form or another, you know, again, we they can go to our web page. We have our, our messages archived as well as other messages from guest speakers and and uh, others who teach here at the church. They can always go to our web page. We do have broadcasts on YouTube. I'm not quite sure how you get to it, but I assume that they'd know how to navigate that and get to it if they'd like. Again, we're going to be doing a um, a live kind of broadcast. It'll be starting, God willing, sometime in January, where on Thursdays I'll be doing a live kind of uh, uh, feed from the campus in various places. They'll be asking me questions that are related to current events or whatever, and I'll I'll just address those for 10 minutes or so. Uh, we do have our podcasts. We have those archived, once again, on calvaryccv.org. And so there's a variety of ways that people can stay in contact with us. They could always visit if they'd like. <laughs> and then you, you're also on Instagram, because I, I like all your pictures. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. You're Japanese. You like pictures. <laughs> and then you also have a great Facebook page that people uh, can can follow um, as long as well as uh, a church app, right, where they can download and, and kind of hear the message of, on the church app. Um, you also have, uh, again, you've mentioned the website several times, the YouTube channel, which is uh, which they can get to through the website. And um, and actually, I subscribe to the YouTube channel, and so you could subscribe to it and then get updated when there's new things on there. And then your, how would they reach your podcast? Is that on iTunes that they can get that as well? Or? It's on iTunes from what I understand. Okay, awesome. And so there's a, just a variety of of different ways that people can hear your teachings, they can stay connected to the church and be part of their your online, you know, congregation, if you will, uh, and uh, and and stay uh, informed on what's happening. And of course, the best way is to be here in person because there's nothing like being in a room full of people as you're worshiping the Lord and um, and hearing uh, God's word and sensing the teaching as uh, the move of the spirit in that sense. Now, um, uh, again, this is really part one of two programs that we're doing that are kind of uh, celebrating over 25 years of radio ministry and also really announcing to the world this new shift in uh, how the message is going to be uh, presented through alternative media and way and through social media and YouTube and different ways that the message is going to be getting out. And of course, just, you can always go old school, which is to show up at church. And so, uh, <laughs> which is an awesome thing. And, and we're here quite often and, and we love uh, Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. Um, and so for those of you that are listening, would love to have you join us tomorrow as we continue this interview with Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel in Chino Valley. And uh, and uh, thank you so much for uh, taking this time with us, Pastor David. I know your time is is important, uh, and we love you, and I appreciate uh, this uh, you sharing your thoughts with us. And for those who won't be with us tomorrow, love you, God bless you, and hope I see you sometime. Well, welcome to our program today. This is Holland Davis, and I'm interviewing Pastor David Rosales, the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel in Chino Valley. And this is a really a historic program because this is the very last program uh, for a sure foundation for the radio ministry of uh, David Rosales in Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley. And, uh, and, uh, you know, what does that feel like? I, I was just, all of a sudden, I just was thinking about it and I thought, man, this is like a, a momentous day for you because it's like, this is this is the day. Well, we've been on K-Wave for 27 years, right around 27. And uh, yeah, it's uh, bittersweet, to be honest with you. You know, it's not our very last radio program because we're on, uh, on a number of other stations throughout the nation. It's just our last program here on K-Wave. And so the feeling is uh, bittersweet in many ways, Holland, because, you know, for me, with Pastor Chuck, when Chuck wanted us to come on the air as a, uh, you know, a small and younger church at that time, (laughs) excuse me, I was very, um, 
just overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with with every emotion that that a young pastor could have. I was grateful to be given an opportunity to have a voice to share Jesus's love with people in such a broad audience, you know, to be able to reach from San Diego up north into Ventura County and up further. And all to me was just a just an amazing an amazing privilege that I've never taken for granted. And um, the idea that perhaps, perhaps the Lord put something on my heart that people would appreciate. Um, all of those things wrapped up uh, into just a, a joy, a joy to be on the air. I, I can still remember, uh, I would listen obviously to K-Wave before we were on, and uh, I'd I would think what a what a great privilege that would be to be able to communicate to people um, from, you know, so many people from so many backgrounds. And so for me, it's been a beautiful 27 years to be on K-Wave. That's awesome. That, you know, you were talking about being a, a young preacher and really, uh, you know, today's Friday. Uh, this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, you uh, celebrated your spiritual birthday, 47 years uh, walking with the Lord, and uh, and you came to Christ during the Jesus movement, uh, really where Calvary Chapel was born, and, and you were there in the early days of Calvary Chapel, and, you know, it— you know, from that perspective, what are some of the things that you've seen, you know, over over really a lifetime of walking with Jesus? You know, that's uh, that is something that to me is is just a tremendous, um, again, a joy. The idea that when I was 20 years old, that the Lord reached into my life and uh, and took a a hopeless um drug addled if you will uh alcoholic uh angry and uh incapable of maintaining friendships or uh relationships with young women i mean uh, just a totally lost young man and <coughs> excuse me and to transform me uh into what i've become you know i'll, I'll always be grateful it was it was the power of the holy spirit because God's word teaches us that that His His word will, His His spirit will dwell within us, and we become His temple, and that He will write His law on the tablets of our hearts, and empower us to be able to do the things that are pleasing to Him and result in blessings to us. So Holland, you know how it is. I mean, God's miraculous transforming power, and His word that that took my brain that was so distorted and perverse because I had embraced the uh, the philosophies of the world. You know, in the hippie in the hippie era, a lot of people like to romanticize it. But we're the ones who really introduced so much of the evil that is that is embraced now as being what is good. You know, we're the ones who would argue for marijuana use. You know, we're the ones who made issues over why should someone get married? You don't have to. We're the ones who said if somebody doesn't want to have a baby, just use contraceptives. We're the ones who said if you don't want the baby, just terminate its life. It's not even really a child anyway. I mean, after all, it's just a, a lump of tissue. We, we were the ones who brought that garbage in. We're the ones who brought in um, the, uh, the if you don't like something, riot against it. You know, we we... We were not that beautiful generation that people like to romanticize. We were lost and angry and hopeless and had no relationships with one another, really. We would use each other. I mean, that's really what we were. You know, not everybody was as bad as they could have been, but none of us were as good as we should have been. And so when the Lord um, broke into my life, you know, and and I heard a message of forgiveness and a, a message of transformation, a message of, 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 of a, a new life. Uh, I, I, at first, I, of course, didn't believe that that was even possible. But when I gave my heart to Christ December 27, 1970, at a Maranatha concert at the Hollywood Palladium, 
when Arthur Blessed, that street evangelist, gave an invitation, and I gave my heart to Christ. Um, nothing's ever been the same. And the idea that the Lord would take somebody who couldn't be trusted with anything and entrust me with his word and with the spiritual care of people. Uh, Holland, you know, I have to be honest with you. I, I to this day, uh, I'm amazed I'm not weeping right now. I'm, I'm so um, thankful for all that God has done. And the Jesus movement uh, will always be in my, my heart not just a historic thing that you look in some books about how Calvary Chapel did this and that and how Mar Maranatha Music did this and that. No, that's the fabric of, fabric of my life. That's who I am. And I'm not a, a person who reads about it. You know, I'm a person who went through it. And so, you know, I'll always be grateful for, for everything, you know, and I especially will always be grateful for my pastor, Chuck Smith. You know, um, and then God took you from that place of just where you were lost and and messed up and entrusted you with a church, you know, kind of gave you a, a, a church to lead and God blessed that work. And, you know, and so over the years, as you, as God has, has grown you, has matured you, one of the things I've always appreciated about uh, the talks I've had with you is you've never forgotten what it was like to be the pastor of a small church, just like you've never forgotten the freshness of coming to Christ and that shows you in your ministry today. And, you know, as you've grown through the years, what are some of the things you've learned and how has your ministry changed, you know, as you've grown from that, you know, hippie that didn't know Jesus to the pastor of a church and now the pastor of a large church? Now, what are some of the, the areas of growth and, and things uh, changing that you've seen over the years? You know, one of the things that is required of a shepherd is required of a, uh, a woman, a man who wants to be spiritually mature. Uh, and it especially, uh, I would say, um, amplifies when one is given spiritual care over the souls of people. And then it amplifies above that when you're a uh, pastor. Um is uh, the guarding your own heart. It's the discipline of pursuit of God on a daily basis. It's the, it's the asking of God to refresh you on a, on a daily basis on the essential things that have made you what you are and never forgetting where you have come from. I, I'm one of these people who very easily will remember what I was and where I was when I got saved. I've never forgotten, and I never want to. I never want to return. I don't want to go back to the vomit. I don't want to go back to the mud. But I most certainly haven't forgotten what it's like. And, and that has kept me um, in a position where the Lord could use me to talk to people who are there right now. Uh, I, I know that God um, has the ability to transform. I'm a living example of it. And I think of the Apostle Paul when Paul, in the book of Acts, on several occasions— gives his testimony, and he, it's always the same, by the way, he never changes it, never adds to it, and never gives the abridged version, if you will, or whatever. It's always the same, but in so many different places, he will speak concerning what he was. And he refers to himself as what I was. I was once, and well, that's how I look at it too, you know. And so I will not forget where I came from, and I will always do my best to refresh my memory because it helps me to not make judgments on people. On the other hand, I, I know what God can do in somebody's life if they yield to him. Mm. I, I know that he can take, take a person like me and he can make me so different that people who knew me best will think that something miraculous has happened because I saw that when the Lord touched me he touched my parents. Then he touched my family. Ultimately, he, he touched a young woman that came to a Bible study I was teaching. She became my wife. And then ultimately, he touched the children that we had together. And now my grandchildren, as well as friends and those who have known me best. And so, you know, uh, the, the, the gospel message is is a message of promise, a, a promise of a new life. And I've experienced that. Mm. 
And sometimes Marie, my wife and I will, will just kind of like, just we'll be talking and, and I, I will be honest with you. It happens fairly often. I, I'll, I'll choke up just at the idea that look at what he's done. Look at what he's done from some, some little Mexican American kid in Norwalk who was nothing but trouble putting me in the position of, of leading this, this beautiful group of people. I love my church mm. and giving me the, the privilege and the joy of serving as their shepherd. I, I'm telling you, um, Holland, there's nothing better than that. And, and I've been to Israel like 25 times to, wow. I've traveled the world from the name of Christ. I've, I've been in, in many countries, you know, Mexico and, and, and Spain and, um, uh, you know, you name it. I've been to a lot of countries, England, sharing about the goodness of the Lord. Can you imagine that? Mm. I mean, you know, a kid who never, never traveled out of Norwalk or the furthest I ever went was to Hollywood. And then the suddenly to be given this opportunity to travel from state to state, be on the radio. No, it's been a blessing. Oh, praise the Lord. You know, for those of you that are joining us right now, I'm Holland Davis, and I'm here with Pastor David Rosales of Calvary Chapel of the Chino Valley. And really today is the last program of A Sure Foundation. Uh, Pastor David is moving in a different direction uh, with media and uh, and getting the word out and, and really uh, not going to be on K-Wave from this point forward. Uh, we'll still be on the radio in different uh, places, uh, but really focusing on some new outlets for um, ministry that we'll be talking about in a second. Um, but, you know, one of the things that comes to my mind is so often, you know, I'll hear comments like, well, you know, I listen to the radio and that's my church or I watch, you know, uh, services online and that's my church. You know, what is the what is the value of being in a local church anymore? I mean, if you can watch it online, if you're on the radio, why should you be involved in a local church? You know, one of the things that uh, um, the church is, is it is the community of the redeemed. You know, and very often people, because they're they're either not listening or they're not being taught, um, people will have this idea that, well, we're all the church and, you know, I can have church in in you know, the forest, I could have church while I'm just lounging on the beach and, and all. And that's, that's, that's just sloppy thinking is what that is. It's, it's not theologically sound. It's not that you're not a believer everywhere you go, but I think that sometimes because we are fleshly and we have a tendency of wanting to justify our own carnality, we have a tendency of finding every excuse that we can have uh, and can make up to give us permission to continue um, in the direction that we know is in the right way to go. You know, so when you look at the church and you start looking at the theological construct related to it, and you see that there are various metaphors that relate to it and all of that, you know, the body of Christ, etc. cetera. Uh, you need to remember that, uh, that it's been broken into various strata. You know, there's the universal church, uh, there's the uh, triumphant church, you know, there's a variety of ways to speak of it. And uh, the church speaks is spoken of as the church visible and invisible. And uh, we, we have a tendency of taking those constructs and, and not understanding or perhaps not even knowing that they exist and just, just simplifying it to say, well, I'm the church and I don't need to be with other people. When in fact, it is not good that a man should be alone mm. and that God has yeah. brought us into the body of Christ and each member is necessary. So... There is the local church, the church of uh, the redeemed that gather in a in a specific location. And though we have the universal church in the sense that, you know, a Presbyterian who knows Christ as well as a, a Methodist who knows Christ and everything you want to say, as long as they know Christ in a true and salvific way, those people are born again. They're believers, you know, so we, we don't want to get caught up with the denominational uh, titles, etc. But there is the the local fellowship, the church that is my home, where I not only am fed, but where my gifts and talents are exercised, where I am accountable to somebody, where I call that man pastor, where I recognize the leadership, where I 
where I am am entrenched. This is where I'm at, where my loyalties are, you know. And it's not in the carnal way. It's it's no. This is where I'm fed. The way that my pastor Chuck Smith was my pastor. I loved him with all of my heart, and um, and he could feed my soul. And I would trust him, and I respected him, and and I would ask him for prayer, and. And, I, and there were times when I would approach him for counsel or, or just unburden my heart to this man. He was my pastor. You can't do that to a television screen. You can't do that to a computer. You can't do that just by listening to a radio program. You can't do that. It doesn't work. We all need human incarnations of what the body of Christ really is. And so I, I think it's a very, very sick time in the church's history where we begin to substitute when we're able-bodied and capable. We substitute just uh, watching something on the screen so that I don't have to have the actual physical dimensionality of relationship. Mm, There's something about sitting next to somebody in a pew experiencing the same things with a live teacher that you don't get on a screen. And I think that this, what you get on the screen today, Holland, and you know this, you know this better than most people, is what you get is a, you get a cleaned up person person up there where any anything that he said that may be wrong is just edited out. Yeah. If he misspeaks, it's just clarified, you know, so it's perfect. So people like you and people like me, well, we have a, a, a lot to combat because we go up and we stutter over our speech or we have to, you know, reiterate because it wasn't clear. That's human. That's what's real. And that's what the church is supposed to be. So it's a bad place in the church where we begin to substitute uh, physical attendance and service and and committing our funds to these works. Because uh, let's face it, a lot of people are takers today in a way that is unbelievably sad. You know, when you have people who come expecting you to give them services for free, that they're entitled simply because you're teaching thus you should give to me, rather than saying this is something I can support, I think that's very wrong. And pastors who trust the Lord, of all people, we know what it's like to not, I I not only, I'll give you an example, I not only trust the Lord for my my own uh, mortgage, but I have to trust the Lord for the church's mortgage right. too, you know. Yeah. It's my name on that contract, and and I'm telling you, and you know this that that the church is is not the Acts two forty two through forty seven that it should be. It really isn't. It's filled with unfortunately filled with people who have excuses in every way to say that they don't need to be part of, they don't need to be attending, they don't need to serve there. If they don't like what they're hearing, they just kind of walk out and find a place that says what their their itching ears desire to hear. I think that the church right now is really, really in need of revival. We we need to wake up. That's right. Yeah. In fact, I, I like the the fact that you refer to uh, Calvary Chapel, Chino Valley as a Jesus people community, that it is a community of people who love Jesus, who follow Jesus, they're committed to Jesus. Well, for those that are joining us, we are. Um, we're, this is our final broadcast for a Sure Foundation, and um, you know, Pastor David, if people want to stay in contact with you, what are the some of the ways that they could do that through social media or follow your services or continue to get your teachings? Well, you know, there's always the possibility for them to climb in a car and drive over here. <laughs> I mean, we do have a location they could come to. Do it old school. <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, so they could always visit if they'd like. We we have our uh, webpage, calvaryccv.org, and on that webpage we have archives of, of our teachings. And so if they are interested in and would like to, you know, stay in touch with us in, in that fashion, they can. We do have a YouTube um, program that, that they can always uh, Google and and uh, listen if they'd like. We're, we have a podcast uh, um, in our in our church. We have Stitcher if they're if that's the way that they can uh, connect with us. We are also going to be doing a live Facebook um, every on Thursdays beginning God willing in January, where I'm going to 
you know, be on Thursdays, be asked a question and I'll just give a live response to that. So, um, you know, there's a variety of things they could do if they want to stay connected to us. And then you also are on Instagram because I, I like all your photos. So <laughs> so they can follow you there. You also have a, a great Facebook page. They can uh, find out about events and, and all that sort of uh, stuff, too. You know, I mean, this is it. This is your this is your in a sense, your your goodbye to the K-Wave audience. And um, I just feel like we should give you the floor and say, Pastor David, what would you like to say to these folks that have been listening to you for 27 years? Well, you know, first and foremost, I would say I'm surprised that anybody did listen to me. <laughs> I, I can remember our very first Sunday morning uh, that we had. It was in a home in Ontario, and there was a handful of people that were gathered in a front room. And um, I said to them after our first study, we will be meeting here if you'd like next week, and if you show up, that'd be great. And I still feel that way. I, I am always amazed that anybody would actually see value in what we do enough for them to make the sacrifice of uh, dressing up and coming to church. And so for you who have listened to us on the radio off and on, or perhaps many of you have listened to us for many years, uh, I want to say thank you to you. Thank you for the encouragement that some of you have been in that you have written to us. Thank you for for those of you who who took your your own finances and and tried to help us. You know, I truly appreciate your generosity and and I thank you for that. For the rest of you who basically popped in and popped out of our life, I, I'm grateful that that you did so. Thank you for giving us the time and the listening. Um, that meant a lot to me. Uh, I. I'm, we're not going anywhere. I'm not, you know, retiring from ministry or anything. We're, we're simply taking the Lord's uh, finances and, and based on the fact that I need to be a good steward and seeing that that uh, that this this radio station audience didn't see the the value of supporting us, and that's just being real. I'm not complaining. I don't really care either way. I mean, we did this as a, a work of love, and it was always a mission to us. So. I hope nobody misunderstands what you did. Some of you did, and that's too bad. But the bottom line is, um, you know, we were on the radio because we thought we had something to offer. Mm -hmm. And the only way I ever knew if anybody really was listening was through a letter or through through an offering of some sort. We've, we've always been um, gentle in our approach. We've never been... You know, it's not, it's, it, I'll put it like this. It's never been the David Rosales show. It's never been like, oh, support me. I'm so important, you know. Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe in hindsight, maybe I should have made it more clear that we really do trust and rely on the Lord, but we do appreciate your support. Now, if, if you have other radio stations, you know, or rather radio programs that you're listening to and you love them, it would be good for you to write them. It would be good for you to say, I listen to you. That goes a long way, I have to be honest with you. And if you have the, the disposable income, you know, first give to your own home fellowship. Support your church. That's the number one thing I encourage you to. But if you have income that you could, you could put into a radio broadcast that, that you value, then I encourage you to do that because radio isn't free. And uh, some perhaps think that it is. It's not. It's 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 an expensive endeavor. It, it takes a large chunk of a, of a church's budget to be on a station as as large as K Wave. And um, I, I'm speaking on behalf of my brothers and and all who are on the radio now. If you want them to remain, uh, it would be wise for you to let them know that you appreciate them. It would be wise for you to write them and say, thank you, you spoke to my heart. Um, with your computers and your phones, you're, you're constantly doing that for everybody else. You need to remember that that shepherd who really does care for you and really does care about your soul, um, they can use encouragement too. And financially, you know, it, it really is something I just had, Holland, I just had to think that this fellowship has been supporting radio ministry and we've attempted to give meals to people uh, who basically have uh, never really shown an appreciation for it. Mm -hmm. And I had to begin to ask myself whether or not um, that was the best thing to do with God's money. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been praying about this for over a year. 
whether or not to remain on K-Wave. Um, and, and, and so I'll say this to you. Uh, I would say, listener, um, whoever comes on this, this uh, time slot next, show them your appreciation. Mm-hmm. If you appreciate them, show them your appreciation. Even if you just sent a little into them, it would be a, a great help. Mm-hmm. And again, I didn't go on the radio to, to make money. But I just had to start beginning to think, Holland. I had to begin to think, is this the wisest way to expend this fellowship's finances? And, and um, you know, it, it just wasn't. It just wasn't, you know. And so we'll find other ways to get the word out. And I'm sure the Lord will bless it. And, yeah. and that'll be good. Yeah. And, of course, appreciative to K-Wave and the staff and Pastor Brian Broderson and all the years of just supporting the program and what a blessing they are, Brian and Cheryl. And so, um, and so, uh, man, thank you guys for being a part of a sure foundation over the years. And, uh, we look forward to seeing what the Lord is going to do in this next season of ministry, excited for the future. Uh, the church is, is surging forward. It's not shrinking back. It's actually growing and God is doing all kinds of things. And so we're, we're excited to see what God is going to do. And uh, so may the Lord richly bless you. And, and Pastor David, thank you for your faithful service of the Lord, teaching God's word. And uh, and uh, like I say, putting the blue jeans on the Bible, making it practical for everyday living. God bless well, you. Well, I didn't feel that it was a good thing for me to have one last program without saying goodbye to our listening audience. Yeah. And so I just wanted to close by saying to everyone who's taken the time to listen to us over these years, how deeply we appreciate you, how we sincerely in Christ love you, and we pray our ble- the blessing of the Lord upon you. God bless you. We love you. And come visit us sometime.